Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. This video is part of the Homesteaders of America garden tour series and part of Vlogest. If you're new to our channel or just came here from the HOA playlist, we are a family of five in southeastern Pennsylvania, Zone 6B, and I'm gonna show you all the great stuff in our garden, but more importantly today, I'm gonna to talk to you about what we would do different next year. While we're here, let's start with what's on the deck. I grew some gourd plants up here on the deck in fabric pots because, well, I love gourds and I really wanted them to grow over our little trellis here. They did that somewhat, but to be honest, gourds need so much water, it was hard to keep up with them in the fabric pots. I think I will do that differently next year. I will actually go down and plant them in the ground around the deck and let them come the whole way up. Here's something we will not be doing differently. We will continue to use our green stock vertical planters for herbs and lettuces, things we like to come out and harvest and use immediately. In fact, I'm gonna get ready to plant more lettuce in here for the fall this week. It looks like we're having a break in the super hot temperatures here, so it's a good time to get our fall seeds sown directly into the soil so that we don't have to worry about the heat preventing germination. No matter where you're living, it is not too late to get yourself a green stock vertical planter and start a fall garden. We even have a coupon code for it, so look for that down in the description of this video. Next, let's talk about our peppers. We had a really hard time getting pepper seeds to germinate this year, so one thing we've learned is we have to start much earlier. To be honest, I think I will start pepper seeds indoors in January as soon as the goats are done kidding. Like once those babies pop out and everybody's doing well, it is time to plant our peppers inside. That said, we did get a fair number of starts this year from local garden stores, so we did end up with a decent pepper harvest. Our biggest challenge really has been the chickens and the turkey and the ducks eating the peppers. I don't mind when all of the poultry and waterfowl goes into the garden because they do kill a ton of pests and it's okay if they eat some tomatoes and some peppers, but they have absolutely decimated the peppers this year and that is why they are here on this table. Everything that was in a fabric pot came out here to protect it everything that's in the garden is just getting chowed down on no matter how much I try to keep them out of there. Our jalapenos have grown exceptionally well and they are delicious. We have used them for so much this spring and summer. Eggs, salsa, spaghetti sauce, like everything. I've also roasted a number of them to save for use later. This mini bell sweet pepper plant looks like a disaster, but honestly, it's been really productive and they're great snack sized peppers. I've got to do some thinking about next year and how we can protect the peppers while still ensuring that we're getting some of the pest benefits of the poultry in the garden. Unless we make like an eight foot fence around the garden, the chickens are gonna get in. And if we don't eat that turkey, he's definitely still gonna get in. It's just what he does. What did we learn about beans this year? Say it with me, beans can get blight. Prior to this year, we had only ever really struggled with blight when it comes to tomatoes. However, this year we learned beans are very susceptible to blight as well. That means that next year in this bed, I'm still gonna do the beans, but I'm gonna do heads of lettuce down here versus loose leaf lettuce so that I can really mulch the bed well and make sure that there's not any bacteria getting splashed up from the soil. Another thing about beans is they've been extremely productive for us and I need to make sure that we've got room in the freezer next spring to vacuum pack and store the beans quickly so that we don't have any go to waste. This bed I can say was a big success. And here's why. The first thing I did in here was plant early spring vegetables, some cold hardy stuff like radishes and leafy greens. 
Oh, and turnips. Yeah, I did put a row of turnips in here. I was the only one that would eat them, but they grew great. Anyway, those were all done, and then I could put peppers in here when it was warmer. So if I can figure out how to keep the birds out of the peppers, this worked really well. Hey, if you just found us today, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along with our garden journey. We'll be planting the fall garden this week. Some plants that I will definitely do again, although in different locations and different spacing, are butternut squash and lima beans. Our butternut squash has been extremely productive, but I just didn't give them enough room to grow, and I would have gotten tons more fruit if I had planned that better. They were kind of a last minute addition, so they just got thrown in wherever. And those are a plant I want to be more conscious about where I put next year. Let me find a lima bean and show you how well they're growing. I don't honestly know if you're supposed to let them dry on the vine, but it seems to have been working really well for me so far. This pod is nice and dry. I can just pop it open here. And then the lima bean is already relatively dry. Voila! These are Christmas limas from Haas Tools. Down here I have summer squash, which honestly I will probably just skip next year because no one in my family other than me really likes to eat it. So kind of a waste to grow something that no one wants to eat here. Back here, we've got several containers full of potatoes. The potatoes have been a win so far. We haven't harvested all of them, but those that we have look great. Those grown in the buckets and in the higher wooden containers uh, have been the best result. The fabric pots, although they were fine, were not the most prolific. So I say next year we'll probably skip the fabric pots for potatoes. Here I've got my San Marzano tomatoes. I grew eight plants of these and really intended for them to be my sauce tomatoes, my tomato paste tomatoes. They're a little bit too savory for my taste. I prefer a little bit of a sweeter tomato. So next year, I think I'm gonna try a different true sauce variety. Maybe go back to the Amish paste try a different Roma variety. Somebody told me about an Italian heirloom that I think is more strictly a sauce tomato that will give us that nice, thick, meaty tomato for making sauce, but uh, we'll have a little bit more natural sugar in it. This trellis though that my husband Kenny built for me earlier this year, huge garden win. Let's talk about cucumbers now. First, I need to plant maybe fewer cucumbers next year. At least fewer pickling cucumbers. I planted like 10 plants in two beds and I kept up the watering and the fertilizing, but man, I could not keep up with the harvesting and preserving. Luckily, the chickens would find the yellow cucumbers I would find too late. However, next year I'm gonna change that up a little bit. And I'm gonna make sure that we put some slicing variety in there too, because we all love cucumber, but the pickling style ones just didn't have the flavor that I had hoped for. Gourds though, I am still gonna grow all the gourds and I'm gonna grow them in here so they hang down and look super cool because I love everything about this. Look at these things. Wow. Ooh, there's something even more exciting than a gourd down here. That's right, it's a sugar pumpkin. Oh my goodness, I can't wait until pumpkin pie season. Another thing that we'll do again for sure are sunflowers. Ours are primarily hanging here drying right now. Shortly I'm gonna cut them, take them up to the porch and clip them on a little, I actually think it's like a lingerie dryer hanger thing, you know, for all the pantyhose I'm washing and hanging to dry. Uh, but I'm gonna hang them on there to dry the rest of the way. That way I can get this part of the garden uh, cleared out and amended for next year. But I was really happy to see all of the pollinators that these sunflowers brought in and the chickens and us will be super happy to have some sunflower seeds that came from right here. These zinnias have been great for attracting pollinators also. 
plus they're beautiful and I've had so many of them that I could cut them and put them in the house already. I think next year I will space them out more in the garden so I'm attracting the pollinators to different spots in the garden and I think I will try to line the outside of the fence with them as well. The birds don't seem to want to eat these so that would be a great spot for them and would give me more beautiful flowers. Okay, I've got two more areas I wanna show you before we wrap up. One is the greenhouse and the other is our 150 gallon fabric pots. Here is my greenhouse, just absolutely full of amazing looking tomato plants. Our idea on growing tomatoes inside the greenhouse was really to prevent blight and control the water that the plants were getting. In years past, our tomato failures really were due to heavy rains and uh, not being able to get to the plants fast enough when those rains came. Uh, the other thing was it got so wet that there were so many bugs. The plants were getting destroyed, I was getting destroyed, and it just made it all around miserable. No one wants to be miserable in the garden. So this year we planted a considerable number of our tomatoes here in the greenhouse and they have done phenomenally. You know, least amount of blight, healthiest looking plants. Uh, the only thing that I would say I would do differently is put uh, determinant sized tomatoes in here. We did primarily indeterminate with mortgage lifters and Genovese and they got really, really dull and they're, you know, pushing against the top of the, the greenhouse. And um, I think those plants we could get more growth from outside as long as I'm really careful about how I'm spacing them out. And in here we could focus on determinant tomatoes. Behind me we have two 150 gallon fabric pots. In these we have planted cantaloupe, watermelon, pumpkin, squash, gourds, more varieties of watermelon, more varieties of gourds, and these plants are going everywhere. I do have some pumpkin, some watermelon, and a couple small gourds that I have found in here. But honestly, I think I played it all wrong with these two pots. Number one, I put way too many vining plants in there because finding my way in there is insane. And I don't know about you, but all those vining plants on my skin ugh, makes me itch. The other thing is, I think for the number of plants that I put in each of these pots versus the amount of nutrients in the soil and the amount of water the pot can hold, probably just not quite right. Uh, what I am intending to do soon, hopefully, is go in here, look at the plants that haven't set any buds, pull those out, uh, pull out some weeds so I can see what the heck is going on in there, and then hopefully we'll get a little more production from the plants that are doing well in setting fruit. Like I said, I definitely have some pumpkins and some watermelon. Next year, I gotta plan a better place to put all these vining plants. We were just out of space to put them by the time we got around to putting them in the ground and the only thing I left were these pots. <laughs> so that's where they went. The good news is we will definitely get some fruit off of everything and uh, Hey, you live and you learn, that is what gardening is all about. And uh, you have to kill a lot of plants before you learn the right way for your garden and for you. I hope you enjoyed this garden tour more than my husband Kenny will enjoy having 18 gourds in each room for fall decorations because that's how many I grew. Stay tuned for our fall garden this week and more of Vlogus. That means we are publishing every single day. So come back and check it out and watch our crazy antics and our fruitful garden. Thanks guys. See you soon.